The 1921 battle for Blair Mountain is back, at least in, in a smaller way, but a more, really a very interesting way. Stephen Smith, candidate for governor of West Virginia, is with us. Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel, please. Stephen Smith, he is the progressive candidate for governor of West Virginia. WVCantWait.com is the website. It's also the Twitter handle. And uh, he is taking on billionaire governor Jim Justice, and he's doing it with small donors and uh, evoking the Battle of Blair Mountain. Steve, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much for having me on. Or Stephen, I should say. My, my apologies. So... Uh, okay. Tell us about tell us about how you know what it's like in the state of West Virginia to take on a billionaire and, and uh, a friend of mine, uh, in fact, our old producer uh, uh, Troy uh, Troy Miller uh, referred to what you're doing as the new redneck rebellion. I don't know if you use that phrase or not, but tell what what are you doing? What what's what's unique about your campaign here? Yeah, well, uh, to answer your question, it's thrilling. Uh, that what we are offering is uh, the only campaign in recent West Virginia history that doesn't lie to voters, right? The central lie of politics is, trust me, I'll fix it. But we know from history that never in American history, certainly never in West Virginia history, has one politician brought the kind of change our state desperately needs. Uh, only unions can do that. Only movements can do that. And so that's the kind of campaign we're building. Uh, 55 county teams, volunteer teams in West Virginia built up over the last year. 39 additional constituency teams. Veterans can't wait. Seniors can't wait. Students can't wait. Uh, the latest one we launched was an ex-offender organizing team. And all of this political infrastructure, this machine, doesn't have one person's name on it, right? It's not Kanawha County for Smith. It's Kanawha County can't wait so that we build the kind of independent political power that lasts beyond one race and beyond one election. That is great. And I, I, I hope more Democrats are, are, you know, learning from what you're doing there in West Virginia. Uh, we're talking with Stephen Smith. He's uh, running for governor of West Virginia on the Democratic side. Um, the, I, I understand your campaign draws inspiration from the Battle of Blair Mountain. What, what, what was that? So uh, 100 years ago, the bloodiest labor conflict in American history happened in West Virginia when black, white, and immigrant miners marched south against company rule. And they marched against uh, the local political bosses. They marched against the company bosses. They marched against Baldwin Phelps agents. They even marched against uh, the federal government of the United States, which tried to stop them. And uh, it's a reminder to us as West Virginians and, and as Americans that uh, we are at our strongest and our most powerful, and we scare the establishment the most precisely in the moments where we align across race, uh, immigration status, religion, to fight for uh, all of us. And that's what we're trying to do in our campaign. Uh, and, of course, we saw that history reemerge uh, less than two years ago when uh, the West Virginia teachers and school service personnel sparked this nationwide movement. That's right. I had forgotten, and, and we had we saw the same thing happen in Washington State, just north of here, uh, where I where I live in in Portland, Oregon, and and we're and we've seen it in state after state. That all started in West Virginia. You're absolutely right. Um, so so where do you go from here? When when is the uh, well the the elections in November? I guess so. Uh, you know, well, there's a primary. We've got okay. a primary in May, mm -hmm. and uh, you, a couple of the things we've tried to do along the way are uh, uh, really change what electoral politics looks and feels like. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, rather than writing our platform with a couple of advisors in a living room or, heaven forbid, uh, contacting some political consultants and having them write our platform, we took a whole year, 157 town halls across the state, more than 600 visits, literally 11,000 conversations, voter to voter. We took all of that information and built a people's platform from the bottom up so that we have something to run on that was literally written by the people of West Virginia. Our Workers' Bill of Rights uh, language in it was written by nurses. Our education plan language in it was written by teachers and bus drivers. And so what we get to run on is not a handful of slogans, but detailed plans, more than 32 detailed state-level policy plans 
that do things like uh, fully legalized cannabis, start a public bank so that we have capital owned by the people of the state, uh, a corporate crime and political corruption division in the state police so that our state police force are going after the real criminals in our society, uh, uh, prescription drug uh, caps, uh, a wealth tax, uh, the, what would be the first state-level wealth tax uh, levied against uh, financial wealth in West Virginia to pay to make our schools the best in the country, and uh, what we call a small business revolution where we take the enormous corporate tax breaks that we've passed over the years in West Virginia and instead use those to make West Virginia the best place in the country to start a small business or a family farm or a cooperative or a union shop. And that's how we win the government we want and the economy we want is by stopping the practice of sending our wealth in West Virginia out of state. 